iconic game shows. Okay, Got, yeah. Ones that immediately spring to mind for me are 321. Yeah. Krypton Factor. Krypton Factor, great. Yeah, anything with Bob. Bob or Bruce. Or Brucey. Bruce, yeah, done Generation loads. Game, Family Fortunes. Generation Game, what a show. What a show. Every Saturday night, it was the main sort of family viewing. It was, and you couldn't really escape it. It was everywhere. Bruce twice. Yeah. Twice he hosted it. Once in the 70s and then the 90s revival. And then Jim Davison, bizarrely. Jim Davison, odd, odd choice for family viewing. Yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, his uh, but, risque stand-up comedy. But it'd come from doing Big Break. Which again, I suppose you could claim was a was a family, you know, it was a family oriented show. It was... Based around snooker, of course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's odd to get game shows based around specific sports. That's what's always quite interesting. Yeah, because there aren't many of them. So. It's not. But of course, you lead nicely onto <laughs> what we think as our defining iconic it's sitcom. It's got to be the best. It's got to be the one and only Bullseye. Bullseye, absolutely fantastic. Jim Davidson. Oh, Jim sorry, apologies, Jim Bowen. I Jim beg your pardon. Bowen, the one and yep, Jim from Bowen. one gym to another gym. Who was, of course, not me. People may know this. A bit Michael Caine there. Um, <laughs> was a PE teacher who became yeah. a stand-up comedian. Very random. Yeah, and then become a game show host. Late in his late in his his life, really, he didn't. I don't think he started. I mean, stand up. He he must have been in his what late thirties, early forties, something yeah, like. If, yeah. if not a bit later, to be honest. Yeah, but he's one of those guys that actually probably when he was in his thirties looked about fifty anyway. Yeah, I think but, he always looked the same. Yeah. he never really aged. But yeah, but then the early episodes of Bulls, I look at him now and Ooh. you can see he's struggling. You can. I mean, um, unusual format the first series. Mm. I think because when we when we all think of Bulls, you always see the crowd. Yes, Je- the, the audience. Yeah, you know, for the filming generally women of a, a certain of, age yeah, a lot of uh, OAPs with there's a lot of middle agedness yeah, if, if not later yep. got nothing better to do in the afternoons but in the first series he didn't have any any co-hosts it was just him as well unusually the audience weren't seen no the audience were behind the camera as mm. is tradition with, with most shows yeah struggled a lot yeah, I think and I do like the dynamic of the two best friends usually it wasn't a couple no like husband and wife two best friends usually blokes all the way from Tyne Tees all the way from Tyne Tees or <laughs> Cleethorpe or Halifax you always more. kind of found the, the, when he introed them it was always via their ITV region yes <laughs> that's sort yes. of the, the intro you, you've come down from the Meridian region today <laughs> have had a nice day out all that sort of stuff all the way from Yorkshire TV yeah it's, you know yeah and there's always a bit of banter when they're about oh tell us a funny story tell us a funny story well Jim I went to the pub right and I forgot my wallet oh, oh hey got to watch these lads watch these lads uh, he's a comedian this one yeah oh yeah got to see we've got to watch for you it's rubbish it's, <laughs> it's, it's always it's, rubbish oh, good patter but yeah. rubbish well, it's, it's so funny because but it, the longevity of the show, I mean, it ain't, not only ran for quite a number of years, mm. but it's still sort of broadcast every day on Challenge TV. And I still find myself watching it now. Yeah, you're drawn in. You are. How, I don't want to say shoddy because that's not fair. It's no. But it's a little bit I ramshackle. If you look at it by today's standards, it is shoddy. Mm, but definitely. only by a modern modern standards of game shows now. You know, But also, it's, it, the prizes, yes. they're hilarious. Yeah. I but mean, again, very high of the late 70s, early 80s. I mean, at, you know. the, at the time, a hostess trial Hostess trolley was a great one. The middle class aspiration of the pro, of the pro, wasn't it? If you, of, if of you, the working if man. If you had a hostess trolley, you'd do him well. Yeah. And you if you had a tease made and oh. a hostess trolley, you were king of your street. I mean, you know, you chuck in some of the things about uh, a, high, a, a cassette playing hi fi stereo. Oh, a Philips cassette player. Yeah. A 14 inch portable TV with remote. I mean, in the latter <laughs> days, you know and, what I mean? And we'll throw in the plug in area yeah. as well. <laughs> the plug you don't have to sort of screw it, you know, to do, do yourself. Yes. <laughs> but of course, I mean, as. As everyone will know from Bullseye, it's always about the speedboat. Always. Or, or the two, caravan. Two blokes who know each other from the pub, yep. from Birmingham, yep. winning a speedboat. Yeah. Dave and Barry from Wolverhampton winning a speedboat going, uh, what are we going to do with this then? Although, that, that said, I did read something quite recent actually, and this is only literally this year that I read this. The, the speedboat that was on the show generally wasn't the one they went away with. No. And they were offered either... But if, if it was a speedboat they'd won, for instance, they were offered a speedboat, which would arrive in six, seven weeks, yeah. or, or a cash, cash equivalent. Cash lump sum. Yeah, yeah. cash equivalent to yeah. that. And it was the same with a car. On the on the rare occasion, they might win a mini-metro. A mini-metro. Mini-metro. Yeah. Mini-metro. Um, it was the same basic principle, is they could have a car, but you'd have to wait six, seven weeks. Or, just an aeroplane going over there, yeah. um, or you'd get the cash equivalent to it. You know, generally speaking, we're about three thousand pounds in today's money. But again, in today's worth money. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, back then. Three you know, I mean, it would take it would have taken him an entire half hour to count that money out. Oh, I love that bit. <laughs> You've won twelve pound fifty. It's considered two minutes to carry it out. I Don't love go that away. Bit. Yeah, you've got your bendy woolies. 
Your mace, tanked. your tank is safe. <laughs> your bendy bullies are safe. <laughs> You've got a tire. The tire takes the ball to revolve. Yeah, decide what you want to do. Uh, we've had a great day, Jim. We give someone else a go. It's, it's great. Then they bring on the other couple. You've yeah, won six pounds. What six do you want pounds. to do? Yeah, your bendy bullies are safe. Yeah. Do you want to gamble six pounds? Then you get the audience game when they gamble. Gamble, gamble. Yeah. Yeah. Two uh, non darts player. Non darts player. Hundred one or more. Hundred one or more. Six darts. Non darts player first. Non darts player first. Generally, the non plot non darts player would perform a lot better than a darts player. Than the dart player because the dart player's under pressure. Yeah. Because he. He's the dart player, yeah. in inverted commas, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so non-dart player first. Oh, 76. <laughs> you, get, score. you get the lamp, you know what I mean? It's yeah. <laughs> and then a dart player comes up, you need like 20 or more, you're safe. Yeah. Uh, 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 pressure. Struggling. Pressure. No, absolutely. You know, it, and Tony uh, Green, know. that's the gamble. Yeah, I, I love Bullseye. Yeah. You get the, also, I mean, I, I watch a lot of darts anyway. Mm. So you get the, the professional darts player come on for charity. Yes, Bobby George. You know, yeah. yeah. But apart from that, there's very few of them that you actually know. Of by today's, by really by today's sense. A lot of them were in the twilight of their career then. Yeah. I mean, I'm I sure think. I saw or read somewhere that they tried to get Eric Bristow on for something like 10 years. Yeah. And he was always busy. Well, and then when they finally got him on, you know, it was just the biggest coup yeah. for balls like I ever. Mean, in today's sense, Phil Taylor went on there. Obviously, wow. massive darts player by today's mm. standards. I know he's just retired, but by today's standards, probably one of the greatest darts players there's ever been. And he was on there looking incredibly young. And again, he hadn't really done anything in darts by that point. He was, a bit, he was Eric Bristow's protege, a bit of an unknown. But yeah, it's an interesting one because they obviously they get was that the bronze bully, but at the end of the series they got the highest, <laughs> yeah, highest they did number, compete, I think. didn't they? they did there was a bit of competition there, yeah. I think. But it, yeah. all things like this just made that show really work. And just like the contest, the questions as well, contestants. Oh. It's like uh, fi- I'm going for books, fifty quid. Yeah. Oh, it's gone into literature. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who wrote you know Twelfth Night, Hamlet, <laughs> Shakespeare? Yeah, it uh, <laughs> uh, was it J.K. Rowling? Oh, no, sorry. You're just out of time. Someone's buzzed in. Yeah. You know, no, it was Still Shakespeare, actually. It, it, um. Honestly, it's ridiculous. And the suit. Yeah. Jim Bowen, a little gag before he'd come down with you on the lap series. Come down the stairs in between the audience. Yeah. Bit of a, a club joke. Yeah, club, a very northern club northern joke. Northern club joke. Yeah, always turn around to some old deer in the audience. Have a nice time, love. Have a nice yeah. time. Yeah, she's um, been busted in from Halifax. It's so bizarre, it just worked. I mean, that both you and I are both southerners. That's not the environment that was around <laughs> this way. It is very northern. Yeah, the work is incredibly men's northern club thing. Ethic. You know, yeah. so that is quite unique, certainly for us growing up, that sort of that sort of style. Yeah. That sort of comedy, and it's it, it also, just I like the, just like the two mate dynamic. Two mates go on, win a bit of cash, have a g- bit of a giggle, get a new yeah. set of darts. Yeah, I mean, that's what saved them a few quid. Yeah, set of absolutely. Darts. Nickel tungsten. Nickel tungsten. <laughs> but then that's the. It's, I'll, be, I'll be honest. It's the same for so many different shows of that era. You you know you watch things like Family Fortunes. As silly as it is, you watch <laughs> Family Fortunes. But we're not talking Les Dennis nineties or Vernon K. Naughty's versions. Mm. You're talking the earlier versions. I mean, there were quite a few presenters there. Max Bygraves in the very Bygraves, early ones. Yeah. Um, Bob Monkhouse is probably Bob. the one I remember. Apart from this, it's probably the one I remember the most. Yeah. I mean, Bob obviously did. I mean, what didn't he do? He, he was like Bruce Forsyth. They did so many shows, yeah. so many different game shows. Bob was great though. He, you know, I mean, I loved him in his some of his stand-up work. I've seen him doing his yeah. latter days. He did an audience with, I think it was, and he, he his wordplay was fantastic and what he could come up with. But on that show in particular, it was great. Mm. You know, name I don't know a bloke's name beginning with J. Uh, Jeremiah. Yeah. Oh. Not, not uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> right. Our survey said. <laughs> yeah. Not a John. Not a Joe. Not a James. A Jeremiah. And yeah. that's what that's what it was like. People... And then Les brought in the uh, if it's there, I'll give you my money myself. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But it was just again, it's one of those shows where under pressure, you just, just talk your, rubbish. Yeah. Your, your gut reaction is just to say something ridiculous. Yeah. Look. Bob's great. When it actually Bullseye might be the king of game shows, but the actual king of the king of the presenting the game shows got to be Bruce, isn't it? Yeah, Bruce, Bruce or Bob, I'd say. Yeah, I think Bruce. You know, Bruce covered a lot. Play your cards right in the nineties on ITV. Right. Well, eighties for me. I mean, yeah. I, remember, I remember as a kid watching it. Uh, okay, dollies do your dealing and all yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, uh, stick I... or twist. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, nothing take... prepare. Not in this game. Right. You know, it's all these yeah. catchphrases. Yeah. You know, and it's a it, it, brilliant, brilliant show. And again, doing generation game as well. He'd come out. Obviously, there'd be the little silhouette of him yeah, doing his, the, doing uh, his the, Brucey the, kind the of fist on the forehead. Yeah, arm up thing. Yeah. And what's you know what's the scores on the board, Bruce Ford? All, all things yeah. like that in the conveyor, the conveyor belt. Everyone remembers a conveyor belt. Cuddly toy, cuddly, cuddly toy, toy. Yeah, incredible. Right. Um, and again, a lot of manual tasks that you had to do on the generation to win some, a tease made. I love the the sausage filling. 
and things like that. Sausage filling, yeah. You know, it's, there was some more activity based, as mm -hmm. in like doing some sort of play or running around or something. But yeah. well, actually, it sort of side swipes on something else, actually. When you talk about running around and physical activity, the one show yes. which is towards the yes. end of that, one show and it includes a zip wire, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, the Crichton Factor. <laughs> Gordon Burns. Gordon Burns. So, again, the Crichton Factor. What I loved about that is the fact that every time I spoke about a contestant, it was name, age, occupation, and where they're from. <laughs> And the winner yeah. of that round was uh, Barry Smith, the 26-year-old child accountant from Halifax. <laughs> Always. <laughs> Always. In and where else, of... my friend, on primetime television, can you see a middle-aged secretary <laughs> in a green ledger suit going down a zip wire? <laughs> very, very true. Clamming under a kind of netting. I bet <laughs> they thought, yeah, we're going. This will be a laugh. Uh, you've now got to do a Royal Marine assault course, love. That's great, oh though. God. I mean, there was some 3D puzzle. was something I always yeah. did for, like, manual dexterity. That's and right. It was incredible. But how many times did you shout at the TV, turn it round! <laughs> it goes the other way! <laughs> all the time. All the time. It was so infuriating. Yeah, the quick fire round. Take points away if you got yeah. it wrong. Yeah. The watching the video and naming, well, answering yeah. questions on it, but you didn't know what they were going to ask. No. You had to watch the entire thing and just try and remember it as much as possible. What colour wellies was the man wearing? Uh -huh. I, don't yeah. know. I was looking at the car. What number on the door was next to the one he actually went to? Yeah. It's just ridiculous things like that. Oh, and I'm afraid to say that Barry Smith, the 26-year-old chart accountant from Halifax, has, uh, has lost. Am I right in saying that they knocked someone out in that? Am I right in that or not? There was four contestants. I think. Four, and they did the head-to-head -head in shadow. Yeah. They'd light up if the, it was their How question. many went to do the final... Was it all four of them? I think it was all four, yeah. But they started at different times, depending on their finishing depending results before their, that, wasn't that's it? That's right. Oh, it all added up. It's like like time. five seconds, ten seconds. Yeah. And obviously, if you was good on the zip wire and you finished first... Yeah. ...in your green leisure suit... <laughs> Usually a flared leisure suit, because we're not talking, you know... Very age. velour. <laughs> velour. <laughs> velour. A lot of velour going on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. There has to be something said about game shows today, which are great in in many ways, and I particularly like the chase and things like that, and they're very good for what they are, mm. but I don't think they have this... I mean, I know, don't get me wrong, it's been going a lot, a lot of years. It's not iconic, and that's the thing. No, there's not going to be a lot of longevity. I, I mean, are we going to look back in 20 years' time saying, tipping point, do you remember that? Oh, that was a great God. game show. I really hope not. <laughs> so, there's... <laughs> It's just something about, I mean, 70s and 80s game shows that just work. And maybe it is an element of roasting the glasses. We're looking back at something mm. now, and, and it's the rubbish money by today's standards. And rubbish we are viewing present, it by today's standards. Rubbish prizes, rubbish money, rubbish clothes, rubbish yeah. presenters. Although you do you do look at it sometimes and think, oh, actually, I was probably I probably got made to wear that back then. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's sort of that's sort of get up. You're going on telly, put your best mm -hmm. kipper tie shirt yeah. on and, and your best uh, tank top. Absolutely. It's yeah, incredible, really. But um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's, it's a really tough one. Going back to some of the stuff, I mean, I, I think g game shows well, were okay in the 90s. I think they were sort of edging out maybe in the 90s. Celebrity Squares. Celebrity Squares. Again, another Bob production. Yeah, absolutely. Probably, yes. We've, um, uh, always something to Willie Rushton was always. <laughs> it wasn't it a lot. Uh, yeah. To be honest, I, one name that comes to mind when you said that is Willie Thorne. <laughs> he tended to appear on them as well. <laughs> all the Willies. No, Willie Thorne tended to be in, in one of the squares is quite a lot I found you know and the contestant I mean that was quite upmarket at the time because I think if I'm right in saying that when you were if you were lucky enough to win that show you could win one of five cars I think normally a little Suzuki Jeep was one of them but there was quite a few car choices on that show as well mm. big money again for its time you know I don't get me wrong you couldn't win them all but big money what was that one with da, 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 I can't remember what it's called now with oh, oh, uh, strike, and of course it, got strike, strike it lucky, lucky. Strike with it Michael lucky. Barrymore yes yeah. how can we forget that yeah uh, what's not what's a hot spot not what's a hot spot not with, with the, the arrows that go across the screen you uh, know yeah to, to, yeah, to guide them. you the way of yeah. yeah, I mean he was always good for a bit of conversation with the with the guests in at uh, the first when yeah. they first announced you know, who they were. Right especially, the especially if there's an old lady on there. Yeah. He loved talking to an old lady and getting her into a bit of trouble sort always, of on the show. Yeah. Always squeezed in the uh, catchphrase. Right. All right in the back. All right in the back. back. Yeah. yeah. But again, I mean they sort of I think that had its day. That was uh, what eighties I think that was. Yeah, it would have been. And 80s, they sort of yeah. regenerated it into Strike It Rich I think in the nineties. By that point I think it had its day because you had things like there must be a millionaire coming on board and you know it really sort of put those shows well, see, to shame you, at the time. Well, there's a few shows that obviously start to go a bit stale and they just had to rejig the format. I mean, look at, for example, Blankety Blank, yes. Terry Wogan, Les Dawson, and then Lily Savage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, ironically, it works on all, on all forms, I thought. I suppose they had to look at who was around at the time to be a good presenter that would appeal to a wider audience or an audience of that 
of that era. Uh, and then that's why they got Lily Savage. Well, Lily Savage, I always thought, was a bit of a brave choice in many ways. Mm. Because that was mainstream Fox TV, which was a drag, a drag, a drag queen. <laughs> presenting yeah. It, yeah. I mean, ironically now, he does a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, as himself, he's... Paul O'Grady, yeah. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's retired the Lily Savage character and does a lot more in... He on, does a lot of documentaries now. Yeah, he, he does a lot of things about that. But it kind of worked for him. I think that was a really good show, actually. I mean, I like the show. I thought it was quite a good show anyway. Because anything where you're getting the celebrities on there, you know, sort of and helping always, out or not, or yeah, hindering... There's always a bit of innuendo. Vicky, a bit risque. I always like, I think Vicky Michelle from Hello Hello was always on there. <laughs> <laughs> so she was one of those. That, and it would always be sort of comments on because she was doing Hello Hello and stuff at the time. Yeah. So the jokes would be ongoing with her or yeah, with her and stuff like that. And great show. Yeah. Also, I mean, catchphrase as well with the, the genius that is Roy Walker. There are many other very versions. Sunday tea time. Many other remember. versions of that show since, which again are all on challenge, but nowhere near as good. No. Nowhere near as good. Because again, it, a lot of times the host makes it like Roy Walker. He just made yeah, the show. Yeah, absolutely. It was just his gentle sort of nature. He wasn't rude. He wasn't crude. His soft Irish lilt. Yeah. Um, would laugh a lot. He'd laugh at the answers. And when he'd and... laugh at the answers, why? Yeah. What's Mr Chips doing now? It's like, oh, sawing a piece of wood. Uh, no. But that's it. It was a catchphrase. I mean, where... Some it's of these good, catchphrases, but it's not right. It's good, but it's... Well, it's some, of these, some of these catchphrases people were coming out with, again, it's, it's that thing about under pressure on a game show, I think. Mm. Yeah, some of the catchphrases they come out with, like you say, sawing a piece of wood. Where on God's Green Over is that a catchphrase? It's exactly. just not. Yet that would be the answer they would give. And then, obviously, one of the most famous catchphrase clips, I think, which often comes up in these 100 best programmes, is when it's the, the super catchphrase, and they're revealing the panel by panel, just, you know, with answers. Mm. And, of course, it looks like Mr Chips is doing something disgraceful. It's something really, <laughs> yes, which you can find on YouTube. Easily the, uh, viewable. As they're taking the squares away, it looks which, very... Uh, I think Roy Walker, yeah. at that particular moment, has just lost it completely yeah. during that bit of recording. But if you're talking about catchphrase per se, I mean, mm. it leads us nicely back to Bullseye. With yeah. Stay out of the black and in the red, nothing to have two in a bed. Oh, superb. Yeah. So look what you would have won. Look what you could have won. I mean, Which, wow. I mean, that's just gone down in folklore, isn't it? Look what you could have won. Oh, it's a speedboat. Dun, 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 dun. The sort of downbeat version of the music when they oh, don't win. Doing, then. Yeah. yeah, no, when they don't win, they, they bring that downbeat version of the tune in. And always the cartoon bully with the steam carrot his nostrils going... <laughs> I loved it when they did the spelling. <laughs> they had to spell something ridiculous, he like ridiculous, along, car- with a little library, a little book, shuffling the pages as he goes along, yeah. looking for it in the, in the dictionary. So, well, cheese, C H E E S, it's right. That's two quid. Yeah, that's exactly in what it pound was. notes as well. It's exactly in pound note, big pound note, big brown pound notes. It's just love it. Of course, I'll see bullseye. The most famous catchphrase being, well, I think it's a three-worder. Three words, yeah. And it's got to be SSG, super smashing, great. 